This one, 105-103. Now, that final play, point of contention clearly in the locker room after the game. There are multiple Celtics plays. Yeah, I mean, I think he would have liked for me to uh, pass it to Al and have him cut off of it. Um, you know, it was late clock, and uh, we've worked on that play before, and seen I've seen JT hit that in practice countless times, so I felt like it was, it was a good shot. Bad dribble play, guys cutting. Uh, different ways and thought it was a good look. Uh, I missed it. Experience. It's the best thing I can say is experience. We're lacking it and because of that we have a lot of uh, learning to do. It doesn't matter who you're going against. It, it, it matters the type of preparation you have, what you're going out and uh, trying to accomplish. What's the big picture? What are we doing here? These are a lot of things that I don't think that um, some of my teammates have faced of just every single day. It's not easy to be great. So the things that you're doing, that you've done your whole entire career, of being able to, you know, kind of coast by in certain, certain certain situations, and you've gotten away with your youth and stuff like that, being on a championship ball club, you can't get away with that. There are two things we have to get to. There's the final play, and then there's what Kyrie said. So let's start with the final play. Griff, why was Kyrie so upset? Well, and we're going to show it here in the video. I, I think both of us, when we saw the play unfolding, sort of expected one thing to happen. Uh, and here on the video, so the first thing you think you might see is Al Horford setting a back screen for Kyrie, who would cut off and go to that green spot there on the court. The second thing you think you might see, and Gordon Hayward said this is what they were looking for, was Al Horford flashing, give the ball to Al, and then Kyrie's going to cut off of Al for a three-pointer there. They never got to any of that. And I think that's what Kyrie was upset about, was Al is wide open and has the ability to run that handoff play that Gordon did refer to, and that's not what they went to. And what I think is interesting from the sound with Kyrie Kyrie is essentially saying we didn't have the experience to know to give me the ball. And I think he's right. Be really honest with you, I think he's right. These are the moments that you want Kyrie Irving for. He would absolutely get to a shot there. And that it's only a two-point game. So even if he doesn't get to an open, uncontested three, the guy's got more handles than a brew pub. He's going to get an open look. More handles than a brew pub. I like that one. <laughs> but but I, and I definitely agree with you. And then the thing you have to look at is when Kyrie's going to catch that ball on the move, his man is obviously going to be behind him. Al's going to give him the ball. He's going to have a chance to pull up for three or get downhill. And like you said, he has all the tricks, all the handles. He can do whatever. He can go all the way to the basket. He can shoot a floater, stop behind the back, step back, whatever. He could do anything. And in that situation, him not getting the ball, I just don't think sat well with him. He's a competitor. He feels like he's the man. He's the closer for this team. And that's part of um, what is wrong with the Celtics team. Roles are simply not clearly defined. Mm. Kyrie Irving is the closer. Well, guess what? When he wasn't there last year, who was the closer? Tatum, Jalen Brown. And some of that power dynamic, some of that power struggle is still evident when you watch the Boston Celtics. These roles need to be clearly defined by Brad Stevens. That's, he needs to go in there and start doing role definition every single day until these guys get it. Because until roles are clearly defined and everybody knows what their role is, they will continue to lose games like this to teams like the Orlando Magic that they have no business losing to. And poetically, Kyrie sounded how LeBron once sounded. Oh, like Cleveland. hey, Griff. Listening to Kyrie right there, did he not just sound like LeBron, LeBron's first year back in Cleveland when we were there? It was like the student became the teacher. Like, I can literally remember LeBron sitting there giving those exact same interviews and answering the question in the exact same fashion about how young guys have to learn how to win. I love it, man. I love Snatch this pebble from my hand, grasshopper. Yes, man. <laughs> hey, hey, I love how, how the student has turned into the teacher. Well,